Hey everyone, it's Andrew. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a video showing you how to make Turkish coffee at home using an e-brick or Turkish coffee pot, which is this pot right here. If you look back about two months ago, I did an unboxing of this pot. And in that video, I walked through making Turkish coffee for the very first time. And it was an absolute flop where the coffee just didn't taste good and didn't come out as expected. However, since then, I've really worked on my technique and I've gotten it down where I get a consistent pot of Turkish coffee each and every time and so what I want to do in this video is just walk through the steps I do and show you how to make Turkish coffee at home based on my personal experience. Okay so here's everything you'll need in order to make Turkish coffee so you'll need a Turkish coffee pot so this is the DD Copper IST series extra large uh, Turkish coffee pot I got this from Amazon for about $34 it's 16.9 fluid ounces and comes with this spoon that you'll need to use when making it and stirring it. Next, you'll need a scale to weigh your coffee and water. I recommend the Black or the Time More Black Mirror Plus coffee scale. This is an all-around amazing scale for making coffee. I highly recommend it, but we'll use that in this video. Next up, you'll need Turkish coffee. Um, so this is the one I originally went with, and this is the Kurakavi Mehmet Effendi Turkish coffee. It's highly recommended. It comes from Turkey itself. I purchased this on Amazon as two separate containers like this for about $25. Next up, you'll need granulated sugar. So this is pure cane sugar. And then lastly, you'll need a cup to put the coffee in. Um, a lot of people use espresso cups, but I actually use a full cup of Turkish coffee and it works out really well. Um, so that's everything you'll need. And now we'll start walking through the steps to actually make it. Okay, so first step, turn on your coffee scale, whichever scale you're using and make sure it's set to zero. Um, then what you're gonna do is take the Turkish coffee pot, put it on the scale, okay? And then you're gonna tear this, so this is the current weight, you're gonna tear it so that it's zero for the with, the with the pot on the actual scale. After that, what you're gonna do is take um, whatever cup you're using for making this or the quantity of Turkish coffee, you're gonna fill it up with water to just below the brim or level of it, and then you'll pour this into the coffee pot on the scale. That'll give you your overall weight for the water. And so this reads 302.0 grams. Uh, the ratio that I usually recommend is um, one to 10 uh, for the coffee grinds. And so for this number, what you'll do is just divide it by um, 10. So it'll be 30.2 grams of coffee that you'll want. And so you'll hit the tear button again here. All right, that'll bring it back to zero with the water and the pot on it. Then you'll take the Turkish coffee and you'll uh, take it and pour it into the pot until you reach 30.2 grams in this instance. And so that's usually about three scoops or so. Um, I'm just trying not to spill while we're doing this. And so just measure it out until you get to about 30, um, 30.2. And so we're almost there. And that's it. Okay, so we're just over, but that's fine. Um, that's not crazy for the quantity. All right, so you'll close the coffee, put it to the side. Next up, you'll kind of, what I recommend doing is uh, pouring sugar into this. Um, so that's based on your personal preference. So um, you can do either like one to three scoops. What I found from my personal experience as far as the sweetness is I like applying, taking the scoop that comes with the DD Copper coffee maker and doing three scoops of sugar for this. And so you'll do three scoops. All right, and that's everything as far as putting it into the pot. So you have the water, the coffee grinds, and the sugar in the pot. Um, then what we'll do is we'll go over to the stove and start cooking this, and I'll show you how to brew it on the stove. Okay, so next up, you'll put that all onto the stove. I use an electric conduction stove. Um, previously, I've tried using the DD Copper on a, a like a classic gas stove, and I found that this does not um, conduct the fire or the heat from a gas stove really well. So my best success or results has been from an electric stove. And so what you'll do is you'll just turn this on full speed um, up to the highest temperature. And then at the start of this, you'll take the spoon that they include, any spoon will work, and you'll just stir the contents, make sure that the um, actual sugar is completely dissolved and that the coffee is well blended. All right. And then what you'll do is just leave this on the stove for a period of time just to heat up. 
And um, what, the intention of this is you're gonna heat the contents, um, start the, start the, or let the coffee start to foam up a little bit. And then what I've learned is rather than letting it sit, you're gonna basically stir it continuously at a constant rate where it's slow, where the foam can form at the top of the coffee. Um, and then as that foam forms at the top, um, you'll basically just pour it off, um, probably about like one to three times. And then what you'll find is the, all the contents that are at the bottom will start boiling consistently and you'll let that boil to the top and then uh, pour that off as well. And so what we'll do for a moment is we'll just let this sit, um, heat up, and then we'll come back to it once we have to start stirring it. All right, so it's been about four minutes or so, and what you can hear is the um, fluid at the bottom is starting to boil. So what I recommend at this point is just taking this spoon and gently stirring it back and forth like this. And what I found is this allows the contents to basically blend and keep the temperature consistent throughout the, in the entire pot at one time. And so by doing this, you'll just basically sit here um, until the foam starts to form and boil up to the top. Um, what we'll do is we'll just sit here and just keep doing this and I'll show you what happens um, as it boils to the top. So as you can tell, see this is what I mean by the foam. So it'll foam up like this and that'll it begin to form on the top of the surface. And so just keep stirring like this and you'll find that by doing that it'll prevent the entire container from boiling um, and the foam will sur uh, the form at the top rather than boiling entirety, entirely in the container. So now it's starting to form at the top where it's foaming all the way to the top. Be very careful here, don't let it boil over. And when you get it to the top like this, what you'll do is just lift it off the stove, take your cup, and then pour off this foam into the cup. And you can remove the spoon, obviously. And you just, then you'll just take the foam at the top and pour that off so that's all the foam, all right? Then you're gonna just basically put it back on the stove and do the exact same thing. And typically what happens is you'll form another kind of foam like that so it'll foam up again. And so again, you'll basically just pour this off into the cup. Sorry, I'm doing it left-handed. Um, I shouldn't be doing that. And so you'll pour off the foam, leave the rest of the contents, again, stir it up like this. Usually you'll get like one more foam out of this. And so that's what you'll do right there. So there you go. And then you'll just take it off the heat, pour off the foam again. Okay, and that's all the foam that'll form. And then what I do is I basically just let it sit on here one more time. Stir it as it can constantly, and then what it'll do, it'll do is boil up to the top like it's doing right now. And this doesn't really have any foam, it's just the contents underneath, it's much thinner. And so you, what you'll do is just gently pour this into your cup, okay? All the contents into the cup, and that's everything. So that's what it looks like. Um, when you're done, so basically all the foams at the top of the cup, um, you have the, the rest of the coffee below it. And from personal experience, this is the best way to make Turkish coffee. It comes out consistently, very good every time. The main key points I recommend is making sure the ratio is one to 10, weighing it out, using a scale, and then stirring it as you go. Um, the big thing with this copper is that it does conduct heat weirdly, where on a gas stove, it doesn't work really well. So a conduction stove works very well well for this um, and those are the steps that I use and I highly recommend doing that. If you have questions, comments, post them below but this is how to make Turkish coffee using the DD Copper IST series Turkish coffee pot. Um, if you have questions post them below and thanks for watching.